Go ahead. Okay. Hello, I am Mary Tally Bowden. Um, believe it or not, this is my first press conference. I ask you to be nice. I have four very productive, four, four very protective boys that know how to access my Twitter account, and they have no filter. So please be nice. It's hard for me to believe that I'm sitting here um, about a week and a half ago. I, uh, my frustrations came to a head and <clears throat> sent an email to my patients. And I'm a small practice. I'm a solo physician. I've uh, been here for two years. I started off with the intention of just doing ear, nose, and throat and sleep medicine and somehow stumbled into COVID. It was, I was just responding to what my patients were asking me to do. They wanted to get tested because they didn't have access to testing. And I found a way to do that. And I never um, I never rationed testing. I provided access when access was hard to come by. So over the span of the pandemic, I've been open seven days a week. I've tested over 80,000 people, and I have treated about 2,000 people. I'm a good doctor. I fight for my patients. I, um, I treat my patients the way I would want myself treated. I've been on the other end of the patient-physician relationship. As a mom of four boys, I basically spent five years <clears throat> as a patient, five straight years of pregnancy. Um, so I know what it's like. And when I opened this practice, my intention was to treat people the way I would want to be treated as a patient and to treat people the way I would treat a loved one. And that is how I have treated my patients during COVID. So it was quite a surprise to me um, last Friday when I got a text message from the Houston Chronicle telling me that my hospital privileges had been suspended. Um, it's not the way things like this are normally handled. Um, I had very loose ties to Methodist. I only have privileges there in case I have a patient that is so sick that they need to be hospitalized. And I'm proud to say that because of my early and aggressive treatment for patients with COVID, I have not needed to admit anybody to Methodist. So I'm not quite sure why I became their target, although I think based on their history of being the first hospital in the country to mandate vaccines for their employees, that they are using me as an example based on what they have read, which I have not sent to them, but I've sent to my patients, and I have vocalized on Twitter. But since when is that a reason to take away somebody's hospital privileges, try to take away their license? I'm not saying Methodist is doing that, but there are <clears throat> groups that are targeting doctors like myself that are just simply trying to speak what, about what they are seeing. And I have, I don't have research papers to back what I'm doing personally. I have tons of data. I have tons of clinical experience. And when I speak out, speak to my patients about what's going on, it's based on my clinical experience. And that should be good enough. And I'm not sure in this day and age, apparently it's not. Um, it's astounding to me as a physician that I'm not entitled to my medical opinion. Um, I think this is hopefully, uh, it's not how I wanted to be. I would like to go back to my clinic and <laughs> stop. I do not want to be in the media, um, and I do not appreciate the way Methodists handled this. Um, I'm simply trying to help the patients. So, Doctor, why hold the press conference? Because my name is being vilified. I have people leaving fake reviews on my on my website, on my all over the media. I have people calling me a sister of the devil and portraying, misconstruing my intentions. So I, I want to set the record straight. I don't feel like I'm getting fair coverage of my side of the story. 
Dr. Bowden, I guess the issue from Methodist standpoint, and some of the people online, is that you're using ivermectin, which has been has not been proven effective by the FDA again against treatment of COVID-19. I guess kind of explain to us why you have used it to treat patients. Well, when I um, did a survey of all the patients that I've treated with monoclonal antibodies, and I asked them what medications they're taking, 30% of them said they are taking ivermectin, which is a large number of people. I don't know how ivermectin has become a dirty word. It's, it's a safe medication, and I would never give anything to anybody that I thought was going to hurt them. And I did deep research into whether or not I thought it was going to hurt them. Um, so I stand by ivermectin. I have plenty of people who have taken it, and no one has had a serious reaction from ivermectin. Again, it's clinical experience. So the 30% of patients that you surveyed, are they the ones that you treated with ivermectin or others? No, the 30% of the patients that I've treated with monoclonal antibodies all told me they were taking ivermectin at the same time. Dr. what's next for you? What are you looking for? Continue doing what I'm doing. Are you considering any kind of legal action against that this at this point? I'm not going to comment on that. Have you had any conversations with anybody at Methodist directly, either? No, no, no. So all Just, of this has happened through social media or what you... Well, had. they have sent me official letters, but there have been no conversations. Do you plan to have any? I'll have to ask the lawyer. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Because Methodist you will deliver to me. Well, Methodist has touted itself as the example that the rest of the company uh, the rest of the country should follow in terms of vaccines but why are they not sharing with us more data why do we not know how many breakthrough cases they have why do we not know how many patients who have been vaccinated have had side effects why do we not know a firm number of the patients in the hospital who are vaccinated. Um, so if they want to be the, the leaders in, in COVID, then they need to share all the data. They also need to perhaps not vilify doctors who are challenging what the vaccine, the vaccine do. Uh, I have a question. So the people that came, you said you treated people for COVID, am I right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it, it, that treatment ever included the vaccine or it was just? I tried to get the vaccine to my clinic okay. when it first came out and I could not get it because it was not a hospital. <laughs> I basically felt like I was being, I was too small to be worthy. And so I just gave up. So no, I don't, I don't. I don't distribute the vaccine. So I do take that. You wanted to give the vaccine out. You yes, I was on board with it. I tried to get it, and so they were have, just giving it out to the hospitals. You have nothing up. against the vaccine? Nothing against the vaccine. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all for the vaccine, but I have nothing against it. And there's certainly an important tool against this pandemic. Okay. Did you take it as part of Methodist's requirements? That is not something – I don't even ask my patients to have, and I am offended that other people would ask me that. It's a HIPAA violation. It's a personal health information. Yes. 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 Dr. Bowden, on your website, you said you were on staff in Methodist as well as Memorial Hermann Hospital. I have privileges at two surgery centers through Memorial Hermann. Memorial Hermann. Yeah. They, they said you did not have any privileges in acute care. At the hospital, no. The surgery centers. Surgery centers. So you said that you treat 30% of your patients, right? 30% is that right? 30% of your patients were treated of uh, this COVID? Is that what you said? Yeah. 30%? Wait, what? 30% <laughs> of what? Of your patients were treated of COVID, right? COVID? Is that what you said? 30%? 30% of the patients were treated for COVID. That's what he's trying to say. Is that what you said, right? I don't understand. No. I don't so you said 30% of the patients surveyed said that they use. Um,
Now, 30% of the patients that I treated with monoclonal antibodies were taking ivermectin at the same time. Not, not from me, just happened to be from other physicians. Oh, but they were not from you? No. Well, I mean, maybe some of them were, but I don't know. I mean, a lot of these people just come to me because I allow easy access to monoclonal antibodies. Doctor, you look good in the Fort Worth case and you should have to So, I have a patient in Fort Worth at the Texas Hughley Hospital, 48 year old man, family, uh, father of six, sheriff's deputy. Um, He's been in the hospital for over a month. He's been on a ventilator for over a month. His wife reached out to me to try to have me prescribe ivermectin because she wanted to try everything she could to save her dying husband. Um, I agreed, and then you know, she had to have a lawyer get involved because the, ho the hospital refused. So I testified on behalf of my patient, and... We um, won the case, and the hospital was told to grant me temporary privileges and do it quickly. And uh, unfortunately, they decided to stall, and they waited until that Friday afternoon when I sent the email to my patients to tell me that they were denying my request for, for temporary privileges. And this is with... I have a clean record. I've never been sued, no complaints. So there was no clear reason why they would deny my privileges. The, uh, the lawyers went back to the judge and they said, okay, well, we'll, we'll do the privileges, but with some modifications. We'll only grant you privileges to only administer ivermectin, and you have to come and do it yourself or have a nurse do it. No one on our staff will actually give the ivermectin. So I agreed we did that apparently and then we lined up a nurse to come give the ivermectin. The nurse came to the hospital and tried to get in and apparently the hospital had issued an appeal uh, but this was not given to the patient's lawyer yet. So she thought she had her every right to be there and the hospital called the police on the nurse and had her escorted out of the hospital because she was she thought she was following a court order we could not clarify what was going on the next day because it was veterans day the following day we found out there was a stay on the order today that appeal is being processed so we're hoping to have an answer tonight or tomorrow morning Patient is stable, but he's still on a ventilator. And you said that the, because of the, the children, Texas children, uh, the hospital, sorry, uh, because they were the first hospital to mandate vaccines, they were trying to make an example out of you. Can you please elaborate on what you meant by that? I am a solo physician. I have a few thousand patients. I am a flea on the elephant of Methodist. I am not a threat to them. I don't quite understand why they need to single me out with this. They could have suspended my privileges very quietly. Um, but instead, they took it straight to the media. I wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for them taking it to the Houston Project. Um, so, I think they're trying to make an example out of me. Um, I think they're trying to show people, okay, if you speak your mind, if you dare challenge the, the vaccine agenda, then this is what happens to you. You stand in front of your clinic with 20 reporters and, you know, they, they beat you down. Do you have an idea how many patients you can treat? few hundred probably. And they're all okay? They are all, all alive and well. I had one patient tell me she suffered temporary uh, blurry vision, but she wanted to keep taking it nonetheless. But that's all I've had. Yeah, we talked this morning, you talked about what you want methods to now show the public. Oh, yeah. Right. What do you want them to show? Well, I want them to show all their data.
let's have some data transparency. If they are so confident in their position, let's let's see it all. Let's see complications, complaints. Let's see breakthrough cases. Let's see all their data. Dr. Gold, have you been contacted by the Texas Medical Board in relation to anything that's going on in Houston specifically? Well, no, not Houston. There is a there is an online group targeting me, encouraging the public to report me to the medical board. Have you received any correspondence directly from the Texas Medical Board? Yes, regarding the patient in Fort Worth. What do you say to the FDA? Because obviously you you know you know that only medicines that are approved by the FDA can be given to patients, but maybe that That's there's a problem. True. I mean, it, this it, isn't it, off. Ivermectin is an IV, is it? When I before I started prescribing ivermectin, I went to the original study where FDA approved it for human use, and I made sure to research the, the data, and the safety. That was the first thing I did. So it is definitely an FDA approved drug. There's a difference. It's an off-label use of an FDA-approved drug, which is uh, done very commonly. Um, it's, if you look at the data, the safety data, if you do a literature review of ivermectin and try to find patients that have died from ivermectin overdose, uh, I challenge you to do that. Ma'am, how do you feel about this whole thing? How do you feel about this whole incident, this whole thing? I mean, on the one hand, it's it's very stressful. On the other hand, I have been overwhelmed by the support that I've received. It is not what I expected. I have received support from Switzerland, Australia, all over the world. I think people need, I think people are scared to speak up. And so it's been gratifying in that regard. I mean, I've created a lot of enemies, but I've made many more friends. And so... I mean, I hope something good comes of it. Are you a political doctor like the Methodist said? Prior to COVID, I had absolutely no interest in politics. I, I, I have been sort of forced into, a, into a, an area of politics. But prior to COVID, I had zero interest in politics. How, how do you think, how would you like this whole thing to be? Um, eliminate the mandates. Let people have a choice in how they deal with COVID. Recognize that early treatment is effective. But most importantly, I mean, we all want autonomy over our body. We don't want somebody telling us you have to have an injection. Um, I think that there's got to be protection for doctors that have concerns. Um, and, you know, I think that... We need to get the politics out of health care. Thanks, Thank you. 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 Okay, so will you tell us your name one more time? Stephen Mitby. Okay. Stephen Mitby. My law firm is Cyber Mitby. Thanks for your last name, sir. M I T B Y. And can you tell us how you became involved in uh, situation? Sure, I was hired by Dr. Bowden uh, after Methodist announced on Twitter that they were suspending her privileges. Um, we did a full investigation of this situation, and what we, what we have found is Dr. Bowden is standing up for choice. She's standing up for choice by patients. She's standing up for the choice to receive early treatment for COVID. Um, she's not forcing anybody to take monoclonal antibodies or ivermectin, but she believes that you should have a choice to do that because it's your health. And in this environment, there is no FDA-approved treatment for COVID. Um, every treatment that's being offered is being done off label, and. The, two years ago, nobody even knew what COVID was. So there hasn't been time to do the full kinds of studies that are needed to meet the FDA standards for approval of COVID treatment. But what we do know is that there is medical evidence and a lot of prominent doctors out there that believe that the treatments she's using 
um, which don't just include ivermectin, they include other drugs as well, but they work. And her track record speaks for itself. She's treated about 2,000 patients, as she said, and she hasn't had to admit anybody to the hospital. Uh, sir, are you, is your client suing Methodist Hospital? Uh, we have no comment on that at this time. Uh, prior to last Friday night, she had a great relationship with Methodist Hospital, and she's proud of the work that she's done with colleagues. You said you did an investigation. What did that look like? Well, we looked at her track record and what she's what she's done with these patients, and she's been a pioneer in the Houston community in early treatment and keeping people out of the hospital uh, by using drugs. And unfortunately, some in the media have tried to portray her as a quack, as somebody who's offering uh, quack medicine. And that's just not the case. She's using protocols that are being used by physicians all over the country with great success. Do you have any clear local questions for you now? Like any data the patient that she's treating? For her data, the fact that she's treated about 2,000 people and kept them out of the hospital. That's strong proof. There are other studies that support what she's done, and you know, I'd encourage you to well, look at the work. Well, there have been academic studies. I mean, you look at the work being done by Harvey Rich at Yale University. You look at the work being done by a lot of other academic physicians. There's plenty of literature about this, but I can speak to what she's done, and, and she's treated 2,000 patients successfully. So can you talk about where you go from here, just what you're going to assess? Well, we, first of all, we want to correct the record and uh, show the public what a great physician Dr. Bowden is. And we want to talk about her success and uh, refute the uh, negative and false message that Methodist put out on Twitter. It's very unprofessional uh, for a hospital to be attacking a solo practitioner uh, on Twitter instead of having a conversation with her. And so that's why we're here today. After that, I don't know what we're going to do. There's, she has a number of options that she's considering, but the most important thing for Dr. Bowden is to keep treating patients, and that's what she's doing. So one of the options is a lawsuit for defamation? I, I have no comment on that at this time. She's considering a lot of different options, but the most important option is to keep treating her patients. You guys, I think that, unless you have any questions, I think the doc does want you to go to Metrics today and ask them to release their data. Right? I think it's very important to see when Stephen yeah. talk more about it. And maybe he's the one that should do it. But if, if they're going to be like the, the COVID experts, then tell people everything, right? Who's had infections? How many, now it's how many percent of people who were vac vaccinated and have COVID? It's not to say it's bad, good, but if they really want to treat everybody, you know what he's saying, and tell the story is the truth. So, yeah. Right, it, it's time to have a scientific debate about this and not just attack people on Twitter. Unfortunately, this issue has become politicized. It shouldn't be. It's about science. Let's see the data. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.